the HubSpot CRM is probably the best free CRM out there and in today's video you are going to learn everything needed to know to successfully implement HubSpot onto your business. To get started head over to HubSpot.com. I will leave you a link for this down below along with chapters for today's tutorial. Right here make sure to just click on get started for free and you can then either sign up through Google, Microsoft or Apple or by putting in your email address. Once you've signed up you will have to go through some simple questions to basically customize your whole experience. Now this isn't too important, I will actually just skip over this. Uh, as for the name, I'm just going to name this Krause Tutorials and I'm then going to click on next. HubSpot is then also trying to basically get you to use a template, uh, which I wouldn't recommend you to use. Rather click on setup manually right here and um, like this we are going to have full control over everything. And once again, also just skip this, make sure to also skip this, we are going to go over everything from scratch. Alright, so right now we are on the HubSpot dashboard. This isn't our CRM dashboard yet, because HubSpot basically is an all-in-one marketing suit, which is also going to have a lot of other features besides their CRM, but for today's video, we are solely going to focus on the CRM. So to get started, head over to the left right here, click on CRM, and then we are going to get started by clicking on contacts right here. So by default we are going to have two sample contacts, I will actually delete them for now by clicking right here and by then pressing delete right here. Alright great, so if you are for example migrating from another tool, you would most likely actually want to import your already existing contacts. You can do so by clicking on import right here, I will then just click on I set it up myself and then we can import our contacts by simply just clicking on here and then we can just use a CSV, so basically an Excel file to import our contacts. Additionally, you can actually also import an opt-out list or repeat a past import. I'm just going to move forward with the CSV file. Then we will have to select what kind of data this is going to be. In this case, this would be contacts. However, you are also going to have other options available. Then you will have to upload your file. So I'm just going to drag this onto this and now this should be uploaded. We can then choose how we want to import our contacts. In my case, I'm just going to leave this as create and update contacts and I'm then just going to click on next right here. And now we will have to basically map our data. So basically the file that I've uploaded is going to look something like this. This is just going to be an Excel spreadsheet essentially and where we are going to have the first name, last name, email, phone number and so on. And now most of the time HubSpot does actually map all of the data um, pretty good on itself. However, in some cases you will have to actually update this. So for example right here under column header from file we can see that first name is going to be imported as contact priorities and then the first name. So this would be right and then last name would be last name, email would be mail. So as you can see in this case everything has been accordingly set up. However, if you for example do get an error you will just have to basically map the column right Right here on the left onto the correct HubSpot property. So in this case I'm just going to say okay this is going to be correctly done and I'm then going to move forward with this. I will check this one as well and then I'm just going to click on finish import. Alright perfect, now our sample contacts have been imported. Now this list right here is going to be one of the most essential and most crucial parts of your whole CRM because this is basically going to give you guys a list of all of the different contacts that you either work with right now or worked with in the past. So in this case we can then also add certain kind of fields um, like the phone number, contact owner, last activity date and so on um, to these contacts. So these are just going to be additional fields which can store information. Actually you can also edit these columns to display other information types. You're going to see that basically HubSpot does offer all sorts of different options right here. So if you do want to add any uh, other property, any other column, you can do so by using this. Additionally you can actually also create a property on your own. You can also drag around these uh, fields right here and you can also select that the column above should be freeze. So in my case I'm just going to opt out of this for now. Let's now open up a random contact. Let's just go with Jeff Bezos right here and basically this is how the contact view now is going to look like. On the left we can first of all see the name, we can see the association, so basically the company where this person works. We can then also see their email with some quick actions. 
Now, right under that, we can then see some further basic information about our contact, and we can then also see if this contact does have any communication subscriptions or website activity. Because HubSpot does actually also seamlessly integrate onto your website, so this can basically keep track of all of the different clicks that that exact contact made on your website. Then right here in the middle, you can basically see all of the data highlights, recent activities, as well as all of the other contacts that this contact has been associated with. Right here on the companies, we can then also view Amazon in this case. So right here, one feature which I really like would be the activities tab. Basically this right here is going to give you an overview of all of the activities for this exact contact. So no matter if you're scheduling a meeting, if you're sending out an email, if you're calling them, if you're adding a task onto this contact, this is going to show up right here. Additionally, you are also going to have the option to add notes, send out emails, basically call them, create tasks, as well as create meetings. On the right, you're then going to see a further overview of all of the different deals, tickets, payment links that have been associated with this exact contact. So let's now say that you do want to send out an email. In this case, you can use the quick action right here, click create an email, and then you will have to connect your inbox onto HubSpot. This is actually super useful. Like this, you are going to get an overview of all of the different emails that either have been sent out or that you are going to receive. So in this case, I'm just going to connect my Google email. However, HubSpot is actually also going to seamlessly integrate with all other email providers out there. Even if you do have a professional email, this is going to work. Now, as you can see, after a couple of seconds, this email now has been connected to HubSpot. Additionally, if you are using Gmail or Outlook, I would recommend you to install their extension because this is going to give you a quick access option for their CRM. So in this case, I'm just going to click on no thanks. And now we do have the option to directly send out emails inside HubSpot. This generally is a super useful feature, which I would recommend you to take advantage of. So I'm just going to add a subject. And now I'm just going to add, hey, Jeff, want to schedule a meeting, go over, going over our deal. And in this case, um, we can then actually also directly insert meeting links inside HubSpot by simply just clicking on meetings right here. And then we will have to quickly connect our calendar. In this case, I'm just going to click on I set it up myself. So I'm just going to click on connect calendar right here. And I'm then just going to select Google as this would be the calendar that I'm going to use as for this video. Then once again, I will simply just have to basically allow HubSpot to get all of the data. And after a couple of seconds, this now shows should be completed. Once we've connected our calendar, we can then see the meetings tab right here. So we can then either insert a proposed time or we can actually insert a schedule link. So this is going to be right here. You can just copy this link. And as you can see, this is how the link now is going to look like. Basically, this can be used to actually basically just put in a meeting. Um, however, I would recommend you to actually edit your uh, basically when you're available, because as you can see by default, you're going to be available basically, I think 12 hours, which is a little bit too much. So make sure to actually customize this according to when you are free. So in my case, I'm just going to insert a scheduling link and we can then actually send out this email. Additionally, we can actually write inside here and uh, make sure to create a following up to do task um, and we can actually select this and let's say that this should be in two weeks right here and i'm then just going to send this out and as you can see right as we have sent this out this is actually going to show up under the activity tab right here so first of all we've sent out the email and then additionally on the upcoming we can also see the task that is going to be basically set right here as the follow-up task perfect now, if you are, for example, having hundreds of different or thousands of different contacts, this really can get messy quite fast. Hence, why I would recommend you to actually set up a list. So basically just ways of subdividing your audience. You can, for example, create a new list right here and you can then name this niche YouTube, okay? So in this case, all people inside this list are going to be interested in YouTube as a niche. We can then either use active lists or static lists. I would recommend you to use active lists right here. And this is just going to be way more dynamic. And we can then actually add all sorts of different filters, which we do want to. So this could be contact pro properties, import memberships, ads interactions, and so on. And when selecting these, you're then going to get further options as of actually customizing this. Now that we have customized 
customize our contacts, head back to CRM and then head over to companies. Now under companies we can then find all of the different businesses that we have dealt with in the past or work with right now. Alongside their business names we are once again going to see all sorts of different data columns. So same as in the contact views you can edit these to display any information you want to. You can edit the columns right here. So one column which I found somewhat misleading when starting out is the company owner section right here. Basically this doesn't mean the actual person that owns the company, rather this is going to be the person inside your CRM, inside your team that is going to be assigned for this company and that is going to be responsible for it. So I'm just going to select it right now. Now once you have a couple of companies this can really get messy quite fast. So one feature to combat this would be their views right here. So right here you can then basically set up custom views which are then going to for example only display your companies or you can then set something up where one view is going to be a view of high potential companies and so on. Additionally you can also filter your view right here by using these uh, things right here so you can basically filter uh, from the last activity the creation date the company owner as well as the lead status and you can also set up advanced filters right here this by the way also works for the basically for the context right here let's now for example open up amazon right here and let's say that we want to actually create a new task for amazon so in this case i'm just going to enter a task and then i'm just going to name this propose or deal so as for the activity date, we can then set in three business days or we can actually also customize this. We can also change the time right here and we can actually set if we do want to send out a reminder. In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to add notes and I'm then just going to say proposal via Zoom. And I'm then just going to create this. And now this is actually going to show up under the task EU right here. So actually we can see two different tasks. First of all, the propose or deal task, which we have just created. And then also the follow up with Jeff Bezos task, which we have created when sending out an email. Now, basically this is just going to be a mini project management feature built inside the CRM. So right here you can then see all of the different tasks that you have to do. We can then check this off and we can then also set if we do want to create a follow up task. And same as before, we can also take advantage of the views as well as of the different um, kind of ways of actually filtering our tasks. So let's for example say that this company right here, let's once again open up Amazon. Now once we've qualified a client and once there is potential of a sale being made in the future, the next step is going to be to actually add that exact client onto your sales pipeline. You can do so by simply just clicking on add deal right here and then you can create a new deal. So right here, as for the deal name, I'm just going to say this is going to be Amazon and I'm just then going to name this um, Design Work. As for the pipeline, we are just going to select the sales pipeline and as for the deal stage, I'm just going to leave this at the default for now. For now, just create this. And now this is going to redirect us onto the deal view. To actually open up our sales pipeline, head over to CRM and then open up deals. Okay, so actually right now we are on the list view. Um, this is just going to give you guys a spreadsheet view of all of your different deals. Um, in most cases, you are only going to use this to actually export your data. Rather, you are going to use the deals board right here instead. So um, this is then going to actually show us the deal which we've just created. We can then drag this around the different kind of stages inside here. And we can then actually also set this at either as won or lost. Now this deal right here basically is called card and these different kind of sections right here are called stages. To customize your cards, you will just have to click on board options and then under edit cards, you can actually choose the card style. You can choose if this should display priority and associated records and so on. Additionally, if you do want to change the different kind of stages inside here, you can do so by clicking on sales pipeline and by then clicking on edit sales pipeline. So this is then going to give you guys all of the stage names. You can realign them and you can actually also change the deal probability. So in this case, right here, this is going to say 20%. Now, this basically just means the likelihood, how likely it is that this stage is going to be marked as completely and that you are going to move forward with that contact uh, from that exact stage. Now, this usually starts out pretty low, but then gets higher down the line. Because obviously, once the contract has been sent out, um, most of the time you are actually going to close that exact deal because you've already talked about everything, you already basically presented everything and so on. However, in the beginning, once the 
the appointment only has been scheduled and most likely you are going to see some no show rates you are going to see people who aren't going to be interested and so on so make sure to set the deal probability depending on your own business actually let's now head back onto this and let's now actually put this onto closed one right here so now this has been closed as one however we actually haven't set a value for this deal so let's actually do that right now i'm just going to select this and let's now say that the amount is going to be 100,000 uh, euros i guess okay so because amazon does have a lot of money we can say 100k right here and let's now actually mark this as one okay and, and additionally as you can see right here on the bottom the waiting right here is actually also going to be uh, basically updated depending on the probability which you've chose earlier in this case i'm just going to mark this as closed one let's now head to the left right here and let's now head over to reporting and analytics and let's open up our dashboard right here I'm just going to click on I'll set it up myself and then make sure to simply just select the sales dashboard right here. Click on next, click on create dashboard. And now this is going to give us a dashboard view of all of the different deals, how much money you're making, how many deals you are closing and so on. As I've just added sample data, this isn't going to show up really. However, in your case, this is going to work perfectly fine. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you guys aren't sure about HubSpot and actually want a better alternative, which is slightly more pricey, you can actually take my free quiz down below to find the best CRM for your business.